Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery on YouTube. I hope you are doing well. Today we're going to talk about Etsy. We're going to talk about selling pots or artwork on Etsy. We're going to talk about some questions and comments that I've had from viewers uh, about Etsy or about selling online. Uh, we'll talk about some of my thoughts and uh, good, bad, and indifferent, everything in between about Etsy and selling online in general. And uh, not that I'm an expert at that or that I've been the most successful because I'm neither of those. Uh, but I have had a little bit of success on there, and I definitely have some thoughts about it. I've uh, talked with a few customers that have come to my studio li uh, recently, and uh, that has helped me to kind of articulate my, my ideas behind how I utilize Etsy and uh, just kind of my thought process behind using it and the way I approach using it. And so uh, I thought this would be useful information for you all out there because I'm sure some of you uh, are either artists or potters that uh, either already sell on there or are interested in it. And like I said, I've had some comments and questions recently that kind of sparked the idea of making this video. So it's gonna be a little bit more of like a vlog today, uh, but I thought this, like I said, would be useful information for some of you. So let's go. All right, here we go. I don't have any notes written down, so this is just off-the-cuff conversation, uh, and it's not really conversation because it's one-sided. So uh, this is off-the-cuff monologue about this idea and about this subject, but I have thought about it quite a bit, as I said recent, uh, just a second ago, uh, that, uh, that I have talked to other potters, I've talked to customers, I've talked to a lot of different people about using it, and I've thought about it quite a bit myself. So I guess we'll start with history. Uh, I guess I started using um, uh, Etsy uh, around the end of last year, 2019, after I fired my wood kiln for the first time. I finished building the wood kiln in October, and I think I fired it for the first time the end of October. I had my first kiln opening sale here at my studio in the first part of November, and I think right after that I had my first Etsy sale uh, from pieces that I had on there. I believe that's when I had my first one. Either way, it was the end of last year. And uh, a main reason I started using it is because I had already established my YouTube channel at that point. I had um, probably you know eight, seven, eight thousand subscribers at that point, and had been making videos for I think four or five years, uh, but only seriously making videos for maybe a year, year and a half at that point. And so I had several people kept on saying, "Hey, where can I buy some of your work?" You know, and I had done a few transactions where people had just sent me a message. And I took pictures and I sent them the pictures and then we worked out a deal and I had to pack it and ship it and do all the stuff myself at the post office and all that. And, uh, and then also seeing other potters that I know and other YouTubers that were doing Etsy sales and I thought, well, maybe I should check out Etsy uh, as a way to sell pots. And so that's kind of my beginnings of, of utilizing Etsy uh, was, was in that kind of pattern or, or, or around that time frame. And, and the reason was because I had more and more people asking where they could get my work and I didn't have a really, I didn't have a, a good way of doing that. I didn't have my own website built, uh, and I still actually don't. I own my own domain name, but right now all I use for website is my Facebook page, and I have Instagram. And so social media is not like one of my hot button issues. It's not something I really care that much about, but I know it's important, uh, especially if you're trying to promote uh, yourself or your work or uh, you know what you're what you're making. Uh, and so that I've started utilizing it more and I started to try to be consistent at it just like I am with YouTube uh, Other than the last couple of weeks. I had a lot going on with firing this last wood kiln. So uh, Consistency is key uh, with social media and so uh, and with YouTube So that's my history of how I got started using uh, Etsy and uh, it was kind of like the most convenient way to start selling online uh, because they solve a lot of those issues for you that you have to figure out if you have your own website. Uh, because what Etsy does is they don't charge you anything up front uh, as far as setting up your store. Um, when, you, when you make a listing on Etsy, I think it's 20 cents per listing. And it can stay up for like two months, I believe it is, when you create a listing. Uh, they charge 5% uh, of what you sell the item for and your shipping cost. Uh, which is not a huge amount in my opinion compared to you know building your own website and all the details that go into that um, 
They do have a little caveat that they changed um, fairly recently where they are actually doing some advertising on, I guess, maybe Instagram, Facebook, Google. And if you, uh, if you have sold, I think, over a certain amount, I think it's $10,000. If you've sold over $10,000 worth of product on Etsy, you can no longer opt out of this option. But what it is is that they will advertise on, on other places, social media and Google, and if anybody clicks on one of those ads and then ends up buying something from your shop within the next 30 days of them clicking on that ad, then Etsy actually takes, uh, I think initially it's 15%, and I think once you pass that $10,000 threshold, they drop that down to like 12 or 13% that they will take of that sale. Like I said, of, if somebody has clicked on an ad for Etsy and then comes to your shop within the next 30 days and buys something from you, they will then take, like I said, 12 or 13% instead of 5%. Now that starts to get into a, a territory that I think is, is a bit high, in my opinion. Uh, Etsy is, of course, allowed to do whatever they want to do as far as their rates, and if you agree to sell it on there, then you're agreeing to those rates. Uh, I have yet to actually pay that higher percentage. Uh, and there is a way through Etsy that you can track that whether you've paid that percentage or not and they actually make that very clear uh, so that's kind of nice to know uh, but I think one of the reasons that I've yet to pay that percentage is because when I have done Etsy sales one of my ideas behind how I approached utilizing Etsy was that I wanted to make it kind of like my kiln opening sales background on that real quick uh, my idea behind uh, I threw pots for over 20 years for other potters as, as like a journeyman and then I had some time at the beginning of that as kind of like an apprentice uh, when I was very young getting started in pottery and so I've seen a lot of different ways approaching uh, of approaching selling of the pottery that you make uh, most of the time that I've been making pots I wasn't making pots for myself I was making them for other people and then they would finish them and sell them as their own work and so I got to see potters that would you know sell things super cheap and just make a ton of them. I've seen potters that would take a little bit more time and make nicer work and sell it for a higher price. I've seen people that would do 20 to 30 craft shows a year and be gone every other weekend. I've seen people that did uh, kiln opening sales. I've, I've seen all kinds of different ways of people selling work. And what appealed to me the most, especially with a young family, was to, uh, I was interested in wood firing, number one, uh, and I was also interested in, in if, if I could sell work here at my studio rather than having to travel have to travel for 20 to 30 weekends a year to go to craft shows um, that appealed to me because as far as having a young family I didn't want to be gone that many weekends in a year because I, I just don't want to be away from my family or if my if, if my wife and I wanted to go I didn't want both of us have to be gone and then have to find a babysitter for our kids that often and that so it just appealed to me to, to sell work that way if I could. I was also, as I said, interested in wood firing, which also, that's a benefit because I think wood firing is one of those that has a clientele, a customer base that's willing and interested in coming to studios when they have a kiln opening, once they, once they fire their wood kiln and they get a whole new, brand new batch of work that they can sell. It's kind of the experience of being able to come to that event and purchase the, purchase the work, see the kiln, see the workshop, you know, meet the meet the cust or meet the uh, meet the artists and all that kind of thing. My kids love it because I set up them a lemonade stand in the yard, or at least I used to before COVID. So we'll probably get back to that eventually. But and I guess you know I, I didn't have the foresight of, of thinking. No, I don't think anybody did of, of thinking about a, a pandemic like COVID um, that uh, you know that kind of shut everything down. But it really hurt a lot of the craft shows as well. So uh, I've actually done two successful kiln openings. Uh, since all that happened, so uh, you know, one in July and then one here last weekend. So I think going the route of kiln openings has definitely been beneficial for me. It's definitely helped uh, with the with the type of lifestyle that I want to live with making my work, but it also has helped with selling my work. And then Etsy has been a great addition to that. I think Etsy could be a way more substantial uh, uh, addition to my income as far as in a way of selling my work if I took more time and, and I maybe had more time to devote to doing consistent Etsy sales and, uh, and making sure that I was putting work on there regularly. So here's the reason I'm making a parallel between my kiln opening sales and Etsy. Uh, here in Seagrove there are a lot of shops that are open you know like five or six days a week 
uh, and, and have regular store hours in their studio, and most of them do not do kiln opening sales. Um, the, the way that I've decided to approach selling my work uh, and trying to make it successful that way, because I have seen others do it, uh, is that I wanted to do the kiln opening sales and not keep a shop that's open five or six days a week. I don't have regular hours. I don't have a. I do have a little bit of a store, as you can see, all the pots behind me. I'm only open by appointment, and then when I have my seasonal kiln opening sales. And now, of course, introducing Etsy into this. That's a way to to, to sell locally and at distance uh, at other times throughout the year. So the reason I make that parallel is because my mindset behind doing a kiln opening and not having a store that's open five or six days a week is that it makes it a bit more exclusive in the sense that you can't just, you know, whenever you're in town, just decide, oh, hey, I want to go to Matthew's shop and just, you know, buy something. Um, I, I thought that, you know what, that one of the best ways for me to make my kiln opening sales a little more exclusive would be to not be open, you know, five or six days a week, you know, t you know nine to five, you know, Monday through Saturday, uh, was that it, it, it incentivized people to, come to the event of set of my kiln opening sale because they can't just come any day of the week. Now I have had lots of people who either follow me on YouTube or Instagram or local friends and family that I have that know if they call me and I'm home then, then I'll open up and they can come by buy something. But they have to take the effort to make the phone call and schedule the time to come and all those kinds of things. And I do have work in a local gallery as well and they have a sign in there that I'm only open by appointment but they're, they'll give people my card and then if they call me and I'm in town and I'm available, then I'll let people come here and shop. Um, but like I said, the mindset behind that was just to make it a little bit more exclusive to incentivize people to come to my kiln opening sales, not only to get the first pick of the brand new pots that are coming out of my wood kiln, uh, but also, like I said, it's just a, a chance for them to come and see a whole bunch of work that I've made. Uh, it also helps me in the sense that I can work for say two to three months on a body of work, fill up my wood kiln, fire my gas kiln, do all these different things, mostly uninterrupted, and I get to focus and concentrate on my work for those couple months, then take all of that work, fire it, have it presented in a sale on a weekend or two weekends, uh, and it, like I said, makes it a bit more exclusive and a bit more of an event and a special thing that people can come to. I've decided to approach Etsy in a very similar way uh, because it fits in with my mindset behind how I approach my kiln opening sales. So when I have done Etsy sales so far, I've made it so that I schedule them, um, you know, sometimes not that far in advance. I should get better at that. That's one thing I have to work on. But I've scheduled them ahead of time. Uh, I get the pots ready. I, I put, I make all my listings on Etsy. I announce it on all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And then those who are interested in buying pieces from me know that there's a set date coming up where I'm going to do a restock on Etsy, and then I put them up on Etsy. And even though when I create a listing on Etsy that it can stay live for two months or until it sells, I've chosen that uh, once I do an Etsy sale and I leave things up for maybe a week at the most, anything that hasn't sold, I make inactive and eventually just delete from Etsy because two reasons. Number one, it makes it a bit more exclusive that you know what, most because of the way that I'm doing my Etsy sales, most things that are going to sell, sell within that first couple days to three or four days anyway. Also, it makes it a bit more exclusive so that you can't, my, I'm not just going to keep pots on there for two months and then a month from now something sells on Etsy and then I have to go, oh, let me go find that piece that's on Etsy, make sure it, uh, that if I put it back on my shelf here in the studio, make sure it didn't sell in the last two months. I don't, uh, or the other option would be to set all of the pieces that I put on Etsy in a certain part of my studio and be like, all right, these are all my Etsy pots and they're not for sale any other way and I have to keep track of those until they sell or the listing expires. Neither one of those are, in, are, are, are exciting to me or interesting to me because I'd rather, uh, for the ease of, of my own you know, sake of, of keeping track of the pots that I sell on Etsy and to make it a little bit more exclusive, I'm going to put pots up on Etsy and after, like I said, a week at the most, if they haven't sold, I just remove them. I can put them back on the shelf. And I don't have to worry about keeping track of those pots for the next two months. So that's my main mindset behind how I'm utilizing Etsy and why I'm using it the way I am. 
Um, I think, uh, you know, Etsy, of course, I think one of their goals is to have people that will keep stock on Etsy and maybe they make a consistent stock of a certain item and then, you know, they, they might make, and it, that is a benefit in the sense that if you make 50 of one thing and you can make one listing and there's 50 items available in that one listing, it is cheaper as far as listing because you have one 20 cent fee and you can sell 50 items for 20 cents as far as a listing fee and then you know of course only pay the five percent or upwards of 15 percent depending on how it's sold and if the the person that bought it has clicked on one of those ads eventually i would like to transition to my own website because you know most of the traffic or all of the traffic to be honest with you that i'm getting on etsy at this point is traffic that i'm sending there from my social media it's I don't believe that I've, I've gotten any organic traffic t uh, from Etsy to buy something of mine. Number one, because there is so much on Etsy already. That's a good thing and a bad thing because you can just get lost on Etsy uh, as far as if you're selling work on there, your work can just get lost in this mass sea of handmade items that are on Etsy. That's you know that's good and bad. There are lots of things on there, so people know to come to look for look at Etsy for a, a, a myriad of, of different handmade items. Uh, but as an artist, it's it's kind of can be tough. Etsy is also trying to promote people to do free shipping on Etsy, and that if you do free shipping, they'll they'll promote they'll help promote you on their front page of Etsy and all kinds of things like that. But I think that is really geared towards the people that are gonna Etsy is their main way of selling their work. It's, it's like, you know, they're going to keep a stock on Etsy. Like they, they can, you know, like I said, that is their driving force of how they're selling their work. That is the main way that they're selling whatever it is that they're making. And they have things, they have, they have uh, uh, processes in place that will help them stay up to date on all the things that they're selling on Etsy. And that is not me, as we already talked about. So as I said, I would like to transition to my own website, and I will do that eventually because I think it would number one, it would be very nice to have my own website that I could, uh, you know, if I wanted to, you know, uh, do a blog, if I wanted to write some stuff, if I wanted to, you know, post information, if I wanted to, uh, you know, write details about me and my work and things that I'm working on, it would be a really nice place and a nice format, nicer than Facebook, to be honest with you. Uh, for doing that and and then I could also I could still have links and I could have my Facebook and my Instagram feed and my YouTube feed all embedded in that website and then I could sell through that website as well and I know there are templates out there through Squarespace and other people like that uh, that I could build a website on my own if I have the time to do that so the main reason that I haven't done that yet is mainly just time I know I know I can learn how to do that and I know I could I could utilize one of those template-based website companies to make a website that would look very nice and that would accomplish the goal that I'm trying to accomplish, but it's just taking the time to go through that whole process. I've started it, like th I think, twice now on Squarespace of trying to, to start designing a website, and it just kind of gets to a point where I'm like, you know what, this is going to take a bit more time than I have right now, and so I wasn't willing to do that. The other side of that is I could find somebody to build a website and there are some local companies that I know I could utilize to build a website and it wouldn't be outrageously expensive uh, but that's also another thing that I just have to weigh my options of like okay well right now what's it costing me to sell on Etsy and is it is it worth it to invest that money in my own website at this point or should I just keep utilizing Etsy? And as little that I've utilized Etsy at this point, I think it's still worth it for me to use Etsy instead of building my own website at this point. So I definitely think that I could utilize uh, Etsy more effectively and more efficiently at this point. Uh, I think, like I said, they have a great platform. Uh, the ease of, 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 of uploading, you know, the, the, the way that they have their system set up is fairly... Uh, user friendly and you know to be able to upload you know three or four or five photos of each piece uh, the way that you create a listing I mean it is there is some time consumption that happens there but that's gonna happen no matter where I'm selling work so the, the templates they have set up basically to, to create a listing and all of the questions that they ask you it's once you get started using it it is a pretty convenient way to to create a listing and then if you have a similar item but it's a little bit different you can duplicate that listing 
uh, and then just change the photos and change a little bit of the description, is, which is what I do, because that makes it a whole lot faster uh, than just creating a whole new listing every time you do it. You can duplicate your listings and then just change some of the details and change the photos and all that, as long as you can keep all that organized. Uh, and the last time I did an Etsy sale, it worked out really well. Like I said, I numbered all the items. I put those numbers in the listing, and that did help me a whole lot in, in, in the selling process and then in the packing and shipping process. It usually takes me a good, like I have to have about five days at least if not, a, you know, a little more than five days to, if I'm going to do an Etsy sale, I have to carve out that much time because it's going to take me a full day uh, to take the photos, three or four photos of, say, a hundred items. Um, that's three or four hundred photos. Then I have to crop and edit those photos. Then I have to upload those photos and create the listings. That usually takes me at least a whole day. I think last time I did that, at least eight, probably ten hours of a day to take all those photos. Uh, edit them, upload them, and create the listings. And then, you know, I keep all the listings uh, inactive as I make them. And then, as, as I said, you know, I set the date of when I'm going to make the, the, the Etsy sale happen. And then I can take all those items and make them active all at one point. And so then the Etsy sale, the restock goes live at a certain point. So then I have to have, you know, the first couple days of selling, which are, like I said, the biggest days of, of the actual sale on Etsy. And then it usually takes me two or three days to get everything packed and shipped. So, uh, you know, that, that process is, is pretty lengthy. But at this point, also, I'm doing it all by myself. Like I said, if I, uh, you know, if I could either hire somebody part-time to help me with that or if, uh, you know, eventually if, if Danielle's schedule gets freed up a little bit where she could help me, which I'm sure she'd be happy to do if, if, uh, if she had the time to do that. But uh, with uh, kids and the part-time work that she does and homeschooling, there's just not much time for her to help me do that. And so at this point, I'm doing it solo. And so it takes me quite a bit of time to organize an Etsy sale and to, to execute it throughout those five or six, seven days that I'm doing that. And so, uh, like I said, I think at this point, it still is the best avenue for me to sell work online because of the ease that they make it happen. As far as, like I said, all the uh, the creating uh, the shipping labels, printing the shipping labels with my new label printer that I have that I, I showcased in the video where I was packing and shipping. Um, all those things, I think I've done quite a few things to make that process streamlined, but I still have, like I said, have to carve out those five or six days where that's what I have to focus on. And when it comes to, you know, making all the pots to load and fire my wood kiln, all the people that I have to coordinate to be here at certain times to help load it and fire it and unload it. And then I got to clean everything up and have it ready for a sale. And when I'm leading up to that, I have to make sure that I got enough pots made to fill that whole kiln so that it's, it's a good use of my time there as well. So there's just a lot of logistics that I have to work on personally to make it successful. And if you don't have that kind of schedule, if everything you do is all done in an electric kiln or a gas kiln that's not that huge, and you control your whole process from start to finish, uh, and you don't have to have other people involved in that process, uh, it probably would work a little bit more streamlined uh, for you in that sense, because you can really schedule out your work a little bit better and you're not maybe producing the volume that I have to produce to go in that wood kiln. So uh, there's goods and bads to the size of the wood kiln that I made, but I knew that when I was making it. And so, uh, you know, I, I made it large enough that I could offer some space to other people that could then help me load and fire the kiln and they get a benefit out of that and not just me paying them. And uh, But I wanted to build it small enough that I could fill it all by myself if I needed to, which I have done. Uh, and it just takes a, a whole heck of a lot of pots, as you guys know. All right, I think I've covered just about probably enough about Etsy uh, as far as packing and shipping. I've made a video about that already. Uh, I may in the near future change some of my packing and shipping techniques based on conversation with Ben Owen here in Seagrove. Uh, he definitely has, has figured out some ways that he packs and ships and has also had nothing break, but he's not double boxing. So I'm definitely going to investigate that a little bit more, but that is another big side of Etsy because you have to be prepared to pack and ship. Uh, for that, I use a local company that makes my box makes the boxes that I use uh, so I, I'm, I'm buying from a local company for that uh, they they have the boxes the peanuts 
Um, and then they also have the foam paper that I use. So all that's coming from a local company, which I, I, I like doing that because uh, there are plenty of people here that support me as a local business. I want to try to give back to them uh, in that process. And they're, they're very comparable in prices. So you, know, you have to factor that into Etsy. I mean, there are, there are lots of things that you have to think about when you go to sell on Etsy. The price point that you're going to sell at, I have to think about the amount of time it's going to take me to create the listings, sell the pots, uh, pack and ship everything. Even though the customer is paying the shipping, I still have the cost of all the pro all the boxes and packing materials. Uh, I also have to figure out what my time's worth in all of that process. And uh, you know, it's it's it probably never works out evenly that I could go sit down and make more pots uh, and make more money than actually the time it's taken me to pack and ship and what I get paid uh, paid uh, to pack and ship based on what I'm selling things for on Etsy. Uh, but there, there's, like I said, you have to figure out the details and, and the logistics of how to make that work and how to make it worthwhile for you. And so I'm not going to cover packing and shipping at this point, but you guys know that's pretty in-depth and there's quite a lot that goes on. You guys have seen other YouTubers and other potters that use Etsy and all that they have to go through in packing and shipping. So there is a lot there and uh, I'm not going to unpack that at this point. Uh, but I think you guys have probably heard me ramble enough about this, and uh, I'm tired of hearing myself talk. So anyway, <laughs> thank you guys as always for being here, for supporting the channel. Like I said, I really hope that uh, my conversation or my monologue about this is going to help some of you out there and answer some questions. I'm sure it will raise some more questions as well, and if you want to, you can leave those down in the comments. Uh, like I said, I, I really appreciate all of you being here and I appreciate your support even though for the last couple weeks I haven't been making videos because I really had to focus on finishing all the pots for my wood kiln, uh, loading, firing, unloading, cleaning all the pots, having my sale and all of that. So I am working on an uh, unloading video which I did record and that will come out, be coming out very soon but this will definitely come out before that. And uh, thank you all, like I said, for your questions, comments. Uh, even those about my hair who uh, some of you don't like my new hairstyle uh, but I'll have to tell you that it's not that new it's just new to you uh, you know when I was younger I actually used to uh, when I was uh, probably uh, late teens early 20s I used to like dye my hair bleach blonde spike it all up kind of all wild and crazy and then as it would grow out I'd have like brown hair with blonde tips and all that so if I did that you guys would really freak out because uh, several of you do not like this uh, faux hawk spiky hairdo uh, but you know what I didn't uh, I will clear this up I didn't do it because I have young kids I didn't do it because um, you know it's trendy I did it because you know honestly my hair was growing long during COVID I couldn't go get my hair cut and, and then my wife said hey well maybe you ought to leave it a little bit longer on top I kind of like that and I'm like well if I'm going to leave it long I'm going to do something with it and I just went in there with some of my gel and I spiked it up into a faux hawk and I said I kind of like that and my wife was like well, I, yeah that's cool I like it and so that's why it is, okay? So it's not because I'm trying to be trendy or cool. It's because I liked it, my wife liked it, and I didn't really care whether anybody else did. And uh, yeah, that's just part of me uh, learning to uh, be happy with who I am because if I like it, then I, you know, I just want to do that and, and I'm going to be happy with it. And it's, I'm not going to allow somebody else's opinion, whether they like it or don't like it, to change what I like or what I how I feel about myself so uh, if, if I don't change that and and you don't like it I apologize but I'm not gonna change it because it's something that I like and that's what I want to do and so I'm sorry that it distracts you or that you don't like it or whatever but uh, for now it's here to stay until I decide I don't want it anymore and then I'll change it um, that's the side of uh, of social media and uh, YouTube and all that that I, I don't really jive with is that I'm not putting a poll out and then following that poll based on how I'm gonna change my appearance or the way I do my videos or uh, and all that so anyway most of you if you uh, don't like my videos or you didn't like the ramblings you haven't stuck around for this part of the video so you're probably not offended anyway so uh, in all that I'm done okay thank you guys as always for being here and I've rambled way too much and we'll see you in the next video thanks bye